Hello everyone, AutoWorldly here today with a Live Mixed Reality tutorial. I've been meaning to do this video for a long time and you guys have been asking for it, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna get into how you film a mixed reality video. Mixed reality is when you put yourself into a VR game. The most popular game to film in mixed reality is of course Beat Saber because who doesn't want to see themselves wielding some lightsabers? It's you feel like a badass when you see yourself doing that, so we love it. But um, there are many VR games you can film in mixed reality. So this tutorial is going to cover what you need to film mixed reality, as well as how to set it up, how to use Live. So let's get down to it, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to get into what equipment you will need to film mixed reality. Um, I'm going to include the link to all of the stuff I use and talk about here in the description below, so you can Check it out there, it's all on Amazon. Now you can use Live with any headset that you can plug into your computer. So you can even use it with an Oculus Quest if you have the Oculus Link. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm sure I will whenever I get a link. You're gonna want a pretty powerful computer. It doesn't have to be the most powerful computer in the world. Like my earlier videos, I had a pretty crappy graphics card and I made it work. So, so for CPU, I use the Intel Core i9-9900K. It's a very powerful CPU. And I definitely noticed a difference once I upgraded to it. For my graphics card, I use a GeForce RTX 2080. It's a very solid graphics card, but you don't, yours doesn't need to be that good. You can get away with less. Make sure your computer has a good cooling system because it's going to get really hot when you're filming mixed reality. Now, of course, you're going to need a camera. Now for the first year when I was posting Beat Saber videos, I was using a Logitech webcam. I used the Logitech C920. So it is a good webcam. So if you are just starting out, that is a good option. It is a good affordable option. You don't wanna be investing in an expensive camera right away. Unless of course you're also into like photography or something and you want it for other purposes. So I now use a Sony Alpha A6100. It is a mirrorless camera, very good quality. And you'll definitely notice the quality of my videos improved once I switched to this camera. So for the best quality videos, you'll want one of these more expensive cameras, mirrorless camera, DSLR. This cost me about 700 to $800. It's nice to have a good solid camera around. And yeah, I would definitely recommend this one. So the first thing you're gonna need is a space for your setup. Now I often hear people saying that they can't do mixed reality because they don't have enough space, but you can do a lot with a small amount of space. My space here is six by four feet. It is not ideal. I wish I had a much bigger space to work with, but I've made it work for the nearly three years that I've had this channel, so. So if you just have a six by four space that you can play in, you are good. You might run into the green screen a lot, you might knock it down a lot, but that just makes for some fun bloopers. So you can do a lot with a little amount of space. So keep that in mind. Now that amount of space is what you would need for your green screen area, but you will need several feet behind the green screen area to place your camera because you don't want your camera right behind you. So my camera is right there. It's about five feet away but you can make it work about three feet away or three and a half feet, I would say. But definitely aim for further away, like five feet or more. That would be the most ideal. You will need a green screen for this. I'm just using a nine by 13 cloth green screen, very affordable, about 25 bucks. And I have another one right over here to cover my bed area since that's in the frame. And then for the flooring, I have these like play tiles that like little kids use. Just get like green ones and they're perfect. I used to use one of the green screen cloths as my flooring, but that was a disaster. It's slipping all over the place. So definitely get something that is more likely to stay in place and less slippery. And as I said before, all the links to the products I use are in the description below so you can check them out. Now my green screen blocks my window here along with my dresser so I have to take it down after every recording session. So to make it easy to do that I have these hooks installed in the walls and then I have these clips attached to the green screen with a hole in them that goes over the hook so it just makes it very easy to put up and take down. 
So we've covered what you'll need as far as the immediate play area. Now let's see what you'll need outside of the play area to make your videos look good. Lighting. So as you can see here, I have two lights here lighting up my green screen area. These are softbox lights and they are 85 watts each. Very powerful, very bright, and very hot too I should add, especially if you're in a small room. It really makes the room very, very toasty. Especially fun when you don't have AC. So yes, these are softbox lights is what they're called. These are by Julius Studio. The two of them cost about 65 bucks. Now I've been using these for about two years with no trouble. I still have not had to replace the bulb, so they'll last you a while. You want to have your area well lit so that it will look as clean as possible. If you have a small area, two of these lights should do it. But the more the better. Maybe I'll get a third one eventually, but that would make the room an inferno. It already is an inferno. It'll make it ultra ultra inferno. So maybe, maybe I won't do that. Now, Live. Live is the software we are using to capture mixed reality. You can get Live on the Steam store or you can download it on their site, live.tv. Live is completely free. Download Live, install that. The next thing you need to do is to install the Live Steam VR driver. Like so, once you do that, you will need to restart Steam VR. Now, launch capture. Then you'll need to set up your camera. Add camera, okay? Camera type, video camera is what we want. So your device should appear on here. I use a capture card, the Elgato Cam Link. So that's what it shows up as, Cam Link 4K. Then my camera resolution is 1920 by 1080 and 60 FPS. So we're gonna choose that option. There we go, see we're on the screen now. Output settings, resolution, I go with my highest camera setting. So FPS 60, resolution 1920 by 1080. For capture, you will want to select Beat Saber. It will be on this list here. You can also do it manually if for some reason it's not showing up. Keying, now you will want to adjust this based on your green screen color. So over here you can pick the color of your green screen and then adjust the threshold here. So if I go down, we're exposing the green screen and then we go up, but yeah, adjust as needed. I tend to have to adjust it regularly depending on what outfit I'm wearing because some of the outfits I wear have shades of green. So I'm constantly messing with this smoothness. I usually just keep it the default. Now, crop and flip. Now this is very useful for those of us with tiny spaces because we will need to crop it. See, my right side over here is cropped to 542. Zero exposes this whole area over here. So we crop it. And again, if you have a camera on a tripod, you'll want to adjust this every time because your camera is not going to be in the exact same space. So I adjust this every time. Now, to the fun part, calibration. Click on begin calibration. Now I usually do calibrate from desktop. That's what I find to be easiest, but you're welcome to try calibrate from headset and see if that works better for you. But I'm doing calibrate from desktop. All right, so first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna go up to your camera lens. Now using the hole in the controller, put it as close to the camera lens as you can, then press the trigger button. There we go, so we got that. Now, for these crosses back here, you wanna get as far back in your space as you can to get the best calibration. So, put the whole of your controller over the center of the cross, like so. Pull the trigger, that'd be good. Okay, over here. And... Yep. There we go, okay. Now the next important thing is latency. As you can see, the virtual controller is lagging a bit behind, so we want to adjust that and make them as in sync as possible. So go to your latency settings over here and just mess with it until they're in sync. Now it's going to be different for everyone. I use 96, that's what works for me, but just keep on experimenting until it's everything's in sync. Now it might take a few tries to get a good calibration, especially if you're new to it. I know it took me a lot longer to calibrate when I first started, but once you get the hang of it, you're good. But if your calibration is just slightly off, what you can do is go to position. Now as you can see, mine is very slightly off, so we're gonna adjust the x-axis here. See, move it over. See, now it's much better. So you can do that. You can adjust the y-axis as well, the z-axis. Very simple. 
All right, so the next thing I wanna cover is how to set this up in OBS. So, let me show you. So the only source you need to add here, aside from your desktop audio and your mic if you need it, is your game capture. So, add game capture. Now you do not need display capture. I just have that there for the purpose of filming this. This is my game capture as you see here. Let's just minimize that for a second. So how I have it set up is go to capture a specific window. Then you're gonna pick live output, which is capture.exe. You do not want the one that's live.app.exe. That's not the right one. You want capture.exe. Click OK, it'll appear and just fit it to your screen. And there you go, very simple, very simple. Now another important thing to do is to adjust your desktop audio settings so that they are in sync with your video. So you'll wanna to go to advanced audio properties. And as you see here, desktop audio, you want the sync offset to be the same as your latency that you set in live. So I set mine as 96, so I have it as 96 here. So make sure to do that so that your audio and your video are in sync. Now in terms of what my OBS settings are, I have doo -doo -doo, for output, I use simple mode. I change it to advanced mode when I'm filming other VR games so that I can have separate audio tracks, but I don't need separate audio tracks for Beat Saber, so I just keep it on simple. I use indistinguishable quality, which results in, for Beat Saber, for like one Beat Saber song, the file will be about two gigabytes, I would say, two and a half gigabytes. Lossless is obviously the best one, but you're gonna get huge file sizes, so unless you have a ginormous hard drive with tons of space, then I would stay away from that. The next best would be the indistinguishable quality. Now we are calibrated and can slash some blocks and look cool doing it. <laughs> Alright guys, so that about sums it up. Hope I didn't forget anything important, but um, I'm including a link in the description below to the live tutorial so you can see it in writing and if there's anything I missed, it'll be there. Um, another useful thing is to join the live discord. You can get all the support you need there. Everyone there is very nice and helpful and definitely better at answering tech questions than I am. But if you do have any questions for me, feel free to comment below and if I have the answer, I will give it to you. And if I don't, then I'll just go ahead and redirect you to the live discord because they will have the answers for you. But yes, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Leave me a comment. Let me know your experience with mixed reality. Let me know any questions you have. And um, yeah, that's all. Otterworldly, out. <laughs>